It is one of Airbus best selling jets. It can fly up to 13,450 kilometers, serves medium sized destination, and was originally designed to compete with the DC 10 and TriStar. It's the successor of the A300, the A330. A long time ago, Air Inter was the first airline to fly the plane and ushered in the glorious area of the A330. And the end of that era was in March 2020 when the last Airbus A330 was delivered. But different than expected, the A330neo doesn't sell like its predecessor. Especially the A330-800 was sold only 11 times. The A330neo sold in total 288 times in almost 6 years since the first flight. But why does the A330neo sell so poorly? We will have the best product that you can offer. The best in the world. There's nothing better. Andres Conesa, CEO of the Aeromexico Group. If you want to see more aviation analysis, please subscribe. To understand why Airbus produced the A330neo instead of a clean sheet design, we have to look back when Boeing introduced its Dreamliner. In 2003, Boeing announced the Dreamliner, or also called 787. The 787 would be the successor of the 767. Boeing developed the 787 because the sales of the 767 declined. And they were alarmed by that and thought about a successor after the Sonic Cruiser program failed, which is Boeing's supersonic jet, which never went into production. But that benefited the 787 because some new ideas from the Sonic Cruiser project found their way into the 787. The 787 was the first aircraft to be produced by one-piece composite barrel sections instead of the multiple aluminum sheets that used to be standard then. They also reduced the production costs for the 787 by 40% and the development costs by 60% compared to the 777. Boeing wanted to win back market share with the 787 from Airbus because they came up with a risky but brilliant idea to enter the US market after they sold aircrafts in the rest of the world but the US. They borrowed the A300 to Eastern Airlines for 6 months and paid for fuel and maintenance for them. The plan was successful. After 6 months, the US airline ordered 32 aircrafts making Airbus a severe competitor because Boeing didn't take Airbus seriously before. Boeing announced that the 787 would be 20% more fuel efficient than the 767, thanks to its composite material parts which make the aircraft lighter and more advanced engines from Rolls Royce and General Electric. After Boeing announced the 787, Airbus wanted to answer with an improved A330 but lessers and airlines weren't happy with the re-engined AC30 and Airbus continued with a clean sheet design. Nowadays known as the Airbus A350. Airbus considered an A350-800, which has the same capacity as the A330, but abandoned its plans and only built the 900 and 1000 version, because the 800 version did not offer any significant advantage. A few years later, AirAsia, an Asian low-cost carrier, Malaysia Airlines and Delta pushed Airbus to re-engine the A330 because their fleet of A330s was aging and Delta wanted to replace their 767-300ERs with A330neos. That made Airbus build the A330neo. The first customer was TA Portugal, who got its first aircraft in December 2019. CEO said about the A330neo, the A330neo will give us a lot of operational flexibility thanks to its commonality with the other Airbus aircraft in our fleet. And that is one of the crucial aspects why airlines choose the A330neo over the 787. It is the commonality which makes the A330neo for airlines so suitable. A pilot can easily switch between an A350 and an A330neo, that is also one of the main reasons why Delta chose its A330neo. Also, if you have an A320 type rating, it costs less to train pilots 
that they can fly an Airbus H330neo or an H350. For every airline it depends if you have a rather Boeing sided fleet or an Airbus sided fleet. The commonality is also one of Airbus major selling points. In a direct comparison between the 787 and A330neo, the 787 can load more cargo, means a 787-9, which is the best seller, can load 36 LD3 containers and an A330-900 can only load 33. Especially in the pandemic, this was crucial to break even on routes or make a small profit even when there's almost no one traveling. In addition, the 787 has a no bleed system, means it uses more electric systems instead of hydraulic systems and makes it less vulnerable to hydraulic damages and it's cheaper and easier to repair than an A330 Neo. Another point is the list price of both aircrafts. The A330 Neo is a bit cheaper. The A330 800 variant costs about 260 million while the 787-9 costs about 292 million. Airbus will also be able to grant a bigger discount because the development costs are only 2 billion for the AC30neo compared to 33 billion for the 787. Which takes us to the next point. The AC30neo offers in a nutshell only better engines and wingtips, whereas the 787 is a clean sheet design with composite materials, new engines, a wider cabin and more efficient wing structure. When it came out, it set new standards and pioneered in the commercial aviation industry. But the 787 had major setbacks. It had fuel leakage problems and problems with the lithium batteries which caused a grounding in 2013. You remember? Boeing employees also forgot their tools in the aircraft. And the latest problem, the fuselage issue which caused production halts. So Boeing had even higher development costs than 32 billion because of these failures and that would give Boeing an even smaller room for price reductions. Furthermore, the 787 is way longer on the market than AC30 Neo. In the first 5 years the 787 sold 910 times, the AC30 Neo 288 times only. But the AC30neo came way too late and in the meantime the 787 could win a big market share. Because the 787 was introduced in 2004 and the Neo 10 years later. You also have to note that passenger experience is a bit higher in the 787 because the cabin is wider, both planes are almost equally silent, with 80 to 90 decibels during takeoff. And the 787 has compared to the new electric dimmable windows. The cabin is in the Boeing pressurized with only 6000 feet, while the AC30neo is pressurized with 7500 to 8000 feet. This leaves the passenger with a more premium feeling in the 787, which is better for the airline because passengers will possibly fly again with them because of the better experience. The 787 is clearly the better aircraft, but for some airlines it just makes more sense to buy the AC30neo because of, for example, the commonality, which is exceptional. But if you put the development costs into perspective, the AC30neo is a small success for Airbus. I think Airbus focused more on the A350, which almost has a thousand sales. However, we'll see if Airbus is able to get more sales for the Neo. If you liked the video, please like and subscribe for more aviation content.